Hello and welcome everyone to NEMO's webinar, Out in the Open, Using Outdoor Heritage to Foster Social Cohesion. Our webinar today is facilitated by the MEMEX project. MEMEX stands for Memories and Experiences for Inclusive Digital Storytelling. And we are very much looking forward to hear more about the approach and methods of this project in this next hour. My name is Mira and I work for NEMO. As the network for museums in Europe, our main activities are advocating for museums at the EU level, providing training opportunities, providing a platform for museums to exchange and learn from each other, and helping museums to collaborate across borders. Today, we have five different speakers and representatives of the project, and I welcome Corinne Steinsneider, Alessio Delbu, Christina Damilano, Fran Garcia and Ivo Osterbeck. We will have a Q&A session at the end of the presentation, so please write your questions in the chat function. Or if you feel like showing up on stage, please let us know and we can allow you to uh, open your microphone and camera. And please note that the whole session is recorded and put on our on NEMO's YouTube channel afterwards. To further introduce the project, I hand over to Corinne Steinsneider. Corinne, the floor is yours. Well, hello everybody. My name is Corinne Steinsneider and I'm the coordinator of the Michael Culture Association, uh, which is an European uh, network uh, working on digital cultural heritage. And uh, we are a partner uh, of, uh, of NEMO. Um, and we are uh, one of the partner of the MEMEX project. We are particularly pleased to present today the results so far uh, of the MEMEX project. And, and we are very grateful um, to NEMO for this, uh, for this opportunity. And we are we really do hope that that we will be able to discuss with all of you uh, during this uh, this session. Um, so we have several representatives of the MEMEX partnership here. Uh, we have Alessio Del Bu, who, who is senior researcher at the Italian Institute of Technology of Genoa. Alessio is the coordinator of the project, and he will do a general presentation of the project. Uh, uh, as well as a detailed presentation of the MEMEX app prototype. We have also with us Christina Damilano. She's the president of the ECOM Association, and she will present the um, digital storytelling methodology used in the project, as well as the policy briefs. Uh, we have also with us Frank. Garcia, who is project officer at InterArts and uh, who is in charge uh, of the pilots in general. Uh, Ivo Osterbeek, project manager at Mapa das Ideas, uh, who is uh, in charge of the pilot um, in Lisboa. Um, and uh, they will present the pilot challenges and the achievements. Um, of the pilots. Um, and we have also for the session uh, question and answer three other colleagues uh, with us, Stuart James, who is a researcher at the Italian Institute of Technology of Genoa, Katarina Gomez, who is project and communication manager at Mapas das Ideas, and my colleague, Maud Entonga, who is communication manager for Michael Culture. And now um, I give the floor to Alessio and I wish uh, you a nice session. Um, thank you, Corinne, for uh, the presentation. And thank you, everyone, for joining us in uh, this uh, in this meeting uh, that we're going to explain our project. Um, so MEMEX project is a European Union uh, research and the innovation action uh, of three years land. The project will end this year in November 2022. So we are very happy to have the chance uh, today to show uh, the, the project achievement we reached so far. MEMEX is a highly interdisciplinary project. He has uh, partners that works in uh, social science and uh, in uh, technology. And uh, this uh, interdisciplinary is, uh, is useful in this research project because we are trying to 
understand if uh, technology might help the uh, social inclusion of people and especially people that uh, are at uh, the margin of our society in a way that uh, have been socially excluded by the cultural activity we can bring them together uh, to, to to such activities and uh, such exploitation of our cultural richness so the aims of the project are of course not only um, as I said, but are in practice to obtain uh, best pra practices for the social inclusion and uh, to develop strategies for audience uh, engagement and uh, to create digital tools to access uh, cultural heritage, digital cultural heritage as well. So our communities have been uh, selected and clustered in uh, three pilots that are spread uh, around all Europe. The, the first one is in Barcelona, where the communities are mainly migrant women. Uh, later, we will you, you will see in details an explanation about the communities we involved. In uh, Paris, where we have the District 19, and uh, as well in uh, Lisbon, Portugal, where we have the uh, first, the second generation uh, migrants uh, involved in our testing. So the, the idea is to use uh, these ICT tools in the easiest way as possible. So we are creating an app uh, that can be used on smartphone that is able to uh, to provide tools for digital storytelling. So the migrants are expressing stories about their life and their connection to the heritage that is present uh, in their geographical region. So in practice, what Memex is trying to do is creating a map of the stories of the people in, uh, that are geolocalized in our, in our system. And one of the uh, practical views of, of, of what we do is really this map-like world where each point uh, uh, link to a story that is uh, related to a specific place and a specific heritage in the ground. So we are trying to connect the intangible story of the people to their physical uh, place and the heritage of our place, uh, places. So we are trying to reconnect. Uh, so, sorry to interrupt in you, Alessio. Uh, we cannot see the slides. I'm very sorry. We, we are seeing it the, the full PowerPoint. Okay, okay. now you can see. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, as I was telling, the one of the embodiment of Memex is uh, this uh, is a map of uh, of the stories uh, that are uh, linked to our physical spaces and here you can uh, you can see some of the examples so the the tools itself is really an app that uh, enable people to create these stories uh, in a, in a in a totally digital way and to link these uh, these stories to geolocalized uh, places so this technology of course has to be tailored to the user. And from day one, the project Memex, together with the pilots and the partners, have put the users uh, uh, in front of them in order to understand which are their needs and how to promote as well the use of the technology. And for this reason, I will leave, you, uh, we leave the ground to, to Cristina da Milano that was highly involved in the digital storytelling methodology and the policy recommendation of the project. So please, Cristina. Thank you, thank you, Alessio. And happy to meet all of you participants to this webinar. And thanks again for giving us the opportunity of presenting Memex and the methodology that we, we have been using during the project in the last two and a half years. So maybe Alessio, you can go on with the next one, with the next slide. Uh, as Alessio said, we have been using in the project a quite innovative methodology, let's say approach, better use the word approach, because it is a cross-sectoral approach based on interdisciplinarity. Alessio already mentioned this word, which is really key to Fully, fully understand also the potential of a project like Memex. We have used 
basically a co-creation based process which has been the basis to try to put together the two very different souls of this project the technological one on the one hand and the social and cultural one on the other hand so basically we started by co-creating all the activities together trying to understand each other to share our different views our different points of views our different com our different competences obviously and to merge everything in something which could actually lead us to achieve the goals of the project and why did i use the word co-creation because actually the whole idea underpinning the MEMEX project is based on audience development. I guess you are all familiar with this expression, which is a very important aspect of European cultural policies in the last 15 to 20 years, and which is a, an expression meaning basically trying to create a relationship between cultural institutions, cultural organizations, and the largest groups of society. Co-creation is one of the most important features of the strategic features of audience development processes and strategies. And we have started using co-creation not only with our let's say, end users with the groups that Alessio has already mentioned, but we started within the partnership because co-creation was, as I said, at the basis of what we did together. And after having shared our visions and having found a common point where we actually met, at midway, let's say, between the needs of the technological partners and aspects of the project and the social and cultural one, then we could go on working and sharing the methodological approach based on storytelling and technological innovation, which are the two main features of the MEMEX project. Alessio, please, you can go on. Yes, here we are. Digital storytelling is the methodology we used it's a creative practice, basically it's a, it's a process, which combines the art of telling stories and at the same time using technology to develop these very short personal stories in a digital format. So obviously it has a very strong co-creative aspect in it because creativity and personal creativity is at the basis of uh, digital storytelling. It also has a very strong autobiographical perspective. Why? Well, because actually we asked participants to develop personal stories based on their own experiences, on their own memories, and in our case, linked, strictly linked to cultural heritage. So actually cultural heritage acted as a trigger to develop these memories, experiences, thoughts, and feelings related to heritage, which then converged, became short stories realized through digital tools. And this is a, pro a process which is used in many other domains Actually, the use of digital storytelling in the cultural field is quite recent if compared with its use in other domains. But we have experienced it since many years already with a great deal of success because being so personal and so autobiographical, it actually allows people to share, create new visions, new links between themselves and cultural heritage. Alessio, you can go on with the next one. Another thing that we did within the MEMEX project uh, has been the uh, production of two policy recommend, two policy briefs actually containing policy recommendations, which are strictly related to the methodology we used. The first one 
was a policy brief focusing on capacity building actions, targeting cultural and social professionals. And this, in a way, is linked to what I said at the beginning of this presentation, the effort that we made cultural, social, and technological partners to try to find a common ground on which to start working, on the basis of which to start working on digital storytelling in, within the MEMEX project. So it was absolutely crucial to share also a path, a sort of activity of capacity building among ourselves, among the partners. And this is even more crucial if we, if we think at capacity building that should be addressed to cultural and social professionals in order to use a tool such as digital storytelling to engage people, to improve their capacities of using digital tools on one hand, but mainly to participate, to active participate in cultural practices and cultural activities, to be legitimized also to express their own visions and to have their voices heard through the stories. So it is absolutely essential to focus on capacity building, um, in this respect. The other policy brief is, was about assessing social impact in MEMEX. This is another very important part of MEMEX, assessing the results, assessing the impact of the digital storytelling activities in the three pilot cities and assessing the results in terms of the change that they might or might not have have generated in the participants. So the whole assessment methodology within MEMEX is based on the theory of change, which means we are, are trying to achieve a change of perspective, a change of vision, a change of attitude towards heritage. And we are trying to assess, obviously, all these elements. We are in the middle of the assessment phase. It is absolutely important also to make cultural and social professionals aware of new methodologies, new possibilities in terms of impact assessment to evaluate, to assess whether the results are meaningful and whether these results can be, let's say, taken forward, taken to a more, let's say, a deeper relationship between communities, local communities, and cultural heritage, which is the main objective we are trying to achieve with MEMEX. I am done, and of course, I'm ready for further questions or comments at the end of the session. Thank you, Alessio. Hello, good morning. My name is Frank Gracia and I'm program officer at InterArt. We are a private foundation based in Barcelona. I'm starting the presentation of the pilot project on behalf of the social partners. Um, I will be accompanied by Corinne uh, Steinschneider and from Michael Kultur in Paris and Ivo Sterbeck, Mapadas Ideas in Portugal. Next, please. So as mentioned by my colleagues, um, the social partners, we, uh, since the beginning of the project, we have been implementing three pilot projects. The first one um, implemented by IntraArts in Barcelona with migrant women in the old neighborhood of Barcelona. The second one in Paris by uh, Michael Kultur and Dedal in Rosa Par Parks neighborhoods with uh, people at risk of exclusion. And the third one um, in the historical center of Lisbon by Mapa das Ideas uh, in Portugal. Of course, we have been working uh, with the active collaboration of ECOM in Rome. So what have what we have done so far in the pilot project? First of all, we have organized digital storytelling workshops with the communities in the three cities. And on the other hand, we have been testing the app. So, um, as said by Cristina da Milano uh, before my inter intervention, 
um, there is a very important word in this project, which is co-creation. So first of all, the digital storytelling workshops allowed the participants to create digital stories by linking the cultural heritage of the three cities and their memories. On the other hand, the, the, the testing of the app by the communities allowed us to um, co-create the features of the Memex app. Next, please. So I would like to highlight some data. Um, we have had 80, more than 80 participants in the three cities and 100 stories have been created so far. I didn't mention that um, the stories created in Barcelona, Paris and um, Lisbon um, happened in last year, in 2021. Also, ECOM was in charge of creating more stories with more participants in Rejerica. This will be explained by Cristina Milano a bit later. So in Barcelona, we had 35 participants. We organized, as in the, the other two cities, a series of workshops, of di digital storytelling workshops. In Barcelona, we had around 30 stories, 21 in Paris, 35 stories in Lisbon. We also organized, as I, as I said, um, a no, more than 40 usability tests with the participants to uh, figure out the features of this Memex app. And we organized in the three cities a capacity building event for cultural institutions, museums, and other uh, associations in the three cities. Next, please. So there is another very important keyword in this process of Memex. Um, it's the local partnerships for, for us, for the social partner. It was crucial to um, identify first cultural organizations, but also migrant associations or other social organizations already working in social inclusion. And why? Because um, we wanted to give support to existing, existing community culture-based projects. I'm going to give the floor to Ivo. Okay, thank you, Fran. Uh, Alice, you can move on to the next slide. Yeah, thank you. So uh, at this point, this is almost a, a mandatory uh, step when we talk about challenges in projects that um, that had activities in the past two years. Uh, we were also, of course, um, hindered in our activities by the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, this uh, posed difficulties not only uh, among us, uh, as project members, but also uh, to our uh, local stakeholders, the, um, the other entities that were helping us organize the activities uh, on the territories of the pilots, and also particularly with the people who we were working with, who were vulnerable people, quite often, especially in the cases of uh, Lisbon and Barcelona, because they were migrants, uh, often they don't even have the same access to health uh, institutions as uh, other people. So the COVID-19 restrictions um, basically made the first uh, uh, semester of the, the first six months of the pilots uh, a bit difficult. Uh, the second type of uh, challenges that we had, that we faced, had to do with uh, addressing the needs of participants. Um, you can see that we had uh, some, some levels of dropouts uh, among the participants. It was very hard to make sure that the same participant would be engaged in long term in, in, uh, in several uh, consecutive sessions. And the, the, um, the, the earliest methodology for storytelling had to be quite adapted to be shortened as a result of this. Uh, the mobilization of participants was also uh, especially difficult uh, in, in uh, uh, Lisbon and in Paris. Uh, in Barcelona, it, it went a bit better because the social tissue of the local stakeholders was very helpful to that. Uh, you can move to the next one. I'll ask you, please. Okay. Uh, 
now of course those were common challenges that we all faced uh, and but we also had some specific challenges uh, one of them was the capacity for people uh, to use technology so the the digital divide which was particularly noticeable in barcelona and in paris as well in barcelona it was also important to manage the expectations of the the participants this is perhaps because the participants and the local stakeholders were already pre-engaged uh, which is something that didn't really happen in Paris and Lisbon, so their expectations had to be managed in a different way. Um, Paris had, of course, uh, the, the very hard challenge of gathering uh, very different people, right? They were not looking for a homogenous type uh, of participant, but engaging with all participants in a particular territory. And they, it was also hard for them um, the support of local uh, institutions. This was also kind of similar in Lisbon. Uh, the, there, there are not a lot of um, bottom-up organizations working with migrants in, in Lisbon, and uh, the lack of those types of associations uh, did not help, uh, could not help further the, the implementation. And of course, the situation, the financial situation of migrants in Lisbon uh, made it so that it's very hard to make sure that they are engaged in a continuous process if any type of job opportunity or, or further migration opportunity uh, arrives. And that's it, you can move on. I, I don't know if Fran was going to yeah, thank you. So, well, as mentioned by, by Ivo, the process was challenging, but we achieved a very interesting conclusion so far. Uh, first of all, we noticed a very strong emotional involvement of the participants during the process of story creation. We have seen the group of stakeholders, the local social and cultural organizations growing during the process of um, the digital storytelling workshops in the three cities. Um, the third one, and I think this one is extremely interesting, is uh, we managed to co-create, let's say, uh, safe spaces where the participants, um, they felt integrated in a group and they felt en encouraged to um, reflect on cultural heritage in their cities. And of course, it was a very interesting opportunity for individual and also for collective expression. Next. Regard, regarding the more specific achievements per city, um, well, in Barcelona, what the participants said is that they felt hurt and they were able to dialogue with the cultural heritage of the city. Um, we noticed very interesting participatory and co-creation processes. Um, it is important to say that some stories were co-created between the different participants and um, it was a very interesting dialogue. They, they became the participants in Barcelona um, even tight after sharing their personal stories. So um, we, we, we see this community development very clear. And um, as in the other cities, the storytelling workshops attracted more or other collectives in, in, in the city. In Paris, um, well, the participants increased their digital skills and um, they, they discover more uh, their digital cultural heritage. It was a pride for them uh, to, to valorize the neighborhood uh, that appears to have a bad reputation. The participants rediscovered the history and the urban transformation of the area. We, we have seen synergies between participants and also between, between stakeholders and um, the, the process and methodology of MEMEX attracted, as I said, broader interest from um, the municipality and other stakeholders in Lisbon. Um, there was an increase of communication skills of, of the participants to understand and to learn a new digital languages 
um, we, we have seen as well an increase in in the cultural awareness by the participants. They they started feeling like the cultural cultural heritage of the city, like their own, and they were able. They are able to show their heritage and to talk about it with others. And finally, um, the pharmacy museum in in Lisbon um, now wants to continue. Uh, working and to become a space of uh, a safe space for for, for migrants um, in in the city of of Lisbon. Now I'm going to give the floor to Cristina da Milano. Thanks. Yes, here I am again. Thank you, Fran. Thank you very much. Uh, we uh, and when I say we, I intend Ecom, the organization I work for, which is partner of Memex. Uh, we organized a small pilot also in Italy and namely by the Reggia di Caserta which is the Borbonic Palace not far from Naples in the city of Caserta. Actually there we carried out a digital storytelling workshop um, in the months of November and December 2021 and the whole experience has been required by the director of the Reggia di Caserta as part of the reviewing process of the UNESCO site management plan of the Royal Palace. Basically, they wanted to underline, to stress all the needs that they feel of engaging more uh, the Regia visitors in a sort of co-creative process of envisaging, of sharing visions, ideas, and feelings also about the Regia itself. So the participants created their own digital stories inspired by their own personal memories and experience, experiences that they had lived within the Regia. You can go on with the next one. Uh, actually, actually, in this case, we had a quite different target group if compared with the other pilots. First of all, they were uh, over 60 subscribers, meaning that they were all people who know very well the palace, the royal palace, who attend actually uh, uh, activities within the palace, visit the palace and the gardens of the palace quite often and have already a very strong relationship with the palace. So the target group was a bit different from the others. They were six over 60 subscriber, so subscribers, sorry. plus we had a member of the staff of the palace and one researcher who asked to participate. We used the same methodology, we used Memex, although we had to use the shorter version that Ivo mentioned before, because we had less time than in the other pilot project experiences. And we followed five phases, five face-to-face -face meetings during which participants wrote their stories. And then, of course, there was the selection of the pictures, the selection of the videos, of the music, and the editing phase of the stories. What happened in this case is that being over 60 people, they had some troubles in mastering and managing the digital tool. So obviously, uh, the use of digital tools presents some critical aspects which have already been underlined by my colleagues. In this case, I can confirm that there were some issues, but at the, the same time, they were very excited about, about learning something new in terms of mastering and managing the tools. And the other main difference was really in relationship with the other projects that they cannot be considered a marginalized group. They were well, let's say, um, part of the Caserta community, and they were already uh, let's say, lovers and attendees of cultural activities. So it was a completely different target group and also a very different final result. But very interesting, though. Thank, thank you. We will deep dive now into the uh, technology of Memex. 
And uh, first, uh, just to make a short premise, but uh, when uh, you create uh, this type of tools, there is, uh, there is a lot you, you don't see uh, actually working in the tool itself. Um, the Memex project, uh, of course, one of, of the aim is to create with the geolocalization of the stories. And uh, the stories, uh, in particular, we have to geolocalize not only the stories, but the, the user itself on the map and the cultural heritage uh, assets. Also, we, we need to connect uh, all the, the potential, uh, let's say, heritage that is related to the story. And uh, we might do this as well uh, semi-automatically. So we are constructing a, a knowledge graph, which is geolocalized, given the story itself. And the last step, which is the most challenging part, we are creating uh, uh, software tools that can be used uh, uh, in a, even in other projects for augmented uh, these, um, uh, these stories with augmented reality. Um, uh, we go briefly on the data we are using in a project in order to both, uh, let's say, create stories also and also connect the stories. We use a, a freely available information that comes mainly from uh, Wikidata, uh, OpenStreetMap for the maps, Mapillary, which is a maintenance of these maps with the images like a Google Street View, and of course, uh, database, which are freely available uh, in our case, but uh, in come, for instance, one one of our main uh, sources, uh, Europeana. Somehow we are heading a geolocalization of uh, Europeana assets in the whole world. Memex can be seen as also with uh, having this uh, type uh, of role. Um, we have, of course, the digital storytelling tool that, as I said before, is an app-based tool. Here you can see some screen, uh, screenshot, but uh, allows to access uh, uh, the Memex, uh, Memex app in two ways. One as a viewers, so just, just looking at the stories that are geolocalized in the area we are living in, and one as an author, so an active role has created the digital stories. So the viewer uh, will uh, have a limited uh, functionalities in the sense he will be able to see uh, the story, uh, navigate uh, through them, and uh, follow follow their connections with other digital heritage in the the world. They also filter in the stories given their own preferences. Instead, the author will be able to create such story and uh, pu and publish them. Uh, in the app uh, itself, uploading video, audio images, and other multimedia uh, content. So here you see a screenshot of the navigation of the stories, but uh, you can see it in uh, like in list mode where all the stories are listed, or in a map mode where you can see all the stories of Memex uh, that we produced uh, so far in the pilot, but can be easily accessible accessed in the in the map itself. So we can see also the, our uh, location, but also the story location around. And each uh, story could be clickable, and we show the text um, information uh, together, uh, a front image, and all their multimedia uh, content. We have also this uh, automatic connection system, or semi-automatic, uh, that can connect the stories to other heritage uh, uh, distributed worldwide. This is to spread uh, the interest of users, but also to show that uh, the stories created have a larger context and connection throughout uh, the, the world. And uh, another option is also to create a set of journeys uh, to the story, so a collection uh, of stories that are linked together in order to create a path uh, through, throughout uh, uh, the city. Uh, or having, for instance, a uh, um, story connected together to provide a path throughout the city, or or even in a, in a localized place uh, like uh, museums, like we are going to test uh, very soon uh, in some venues in uh, in our pilot places. And uh, of course, uh, here you see other uh, other let's say. Uh, screenshots that are related to uh, Paris and Barcelona uh, stories that are 
um, we are working uh, on at the moment and uh, increasing uh, day by day. Um, this, uh, this tool you see is related to the pilot areas, but uh, uh, we would like to increase this, uh, this use of the app to other places like Regia di Caserta, as Christina has presented, but uh, we would like to fill all the, uh, the map, the European map with the stories. Then the final aspect uh, I wanted to share it to you is how to create uh, um, uh, augmentation, augmented reality of stories in the physical world, because uh, this is a sense of connection for us will be more interesting as well on using the phone as a screen, as a window, but uh, show the physical objects, but their connection as well with the, with the stories we tell. So we have different way of creating uh, augmented reality space outdoor indoor one is uh, physically to to use uh, functionalities uh, like uh, google airport in order to place for instance an anchor uh, on on a physical space and connect this anchor to, to a story related to a, a digital place not related to a physical one or if you want like to manually uh, uh, locate a story uh, related to an object we can select like the elephant you see in this screen, take, uh, put an anchor, uh, a physical anchor, and take a different snapshot of the very same uh, object from three different point of view, for instance. And the systems automatically, the MEMEX system, will localize in 3D space where the object it is. And uh, with an additional step, we can link the 3D position of the object to any information we might have to a knowledge graph uh, or even to the story related to this object. The other way of functioning is uh, fully automatic, is related to running uh, uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence algorithms to uh, fully, uh, fully detect, uh, um, say, the object in, uh, inside the environment. Of course, the complexity is that the cultural heritage assets are not really uh, detectable by many algorithms, but we are working in order to find a solution to this problem at the moment. And then we would like to uh, scale this, uh, this way of creating augmented reality spaces uh, for multiple users at a large scale. Uh, I would like to show another uh, demonstration, which is not really in the context of uh, of the users uh, in the pilots of the MEMEX uh, project, but uh, is related to a heart gallery. We went uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago, and the people in the heart gallery used uh, um, uh, use a MEMEX uh, app to, to create, for instance, multiple uh, location, but also to put, for instance, prices over the, the assets, the heritage assets, the art assets they have inside the, inside the gallery. And this was done uh, very easily with a few clicks uh, uh, from the phone. So we have uh, two ways of, of functioning for augmented reality. And they're very similar to the one related to the 2D app I showed to you. There is one for creating the augmented reality space. And we are trying to create this tool in order to support and to make easy to create augmented reality tools by connecting physical objects as seen by the phone into uh, linked open data uh, that are related for, to heritage assets that can be for education, digital storytelling, or other activities. And then the other one is related completely to the visitor. So once we have linked the digital assets to the physical world, we would like to show on the phone as a visitor where are the sites that uh, have the MEMEX icon and are related uh, to, to the system we have created and all the possible connection that we might have uh, uh, related to these assets and the rest of the city or the museum we are in. So I will conclude uh, uh, quickly in order to, uh, to provide you time uh, for, uh, for posing your question. So of course, uh, um, MEMEX uh, app and the digital tools uh, would like to have an impact uh, as well on the, on this uh, digital transformation we are experiencing. Of course, one source of this uh, 
efforts as also identified by NEMO was the, the problem of COVID-19, but, uh, but push forward ourselves to have a higher digitization of our assets and also the usability of our assets. And so our, our idea, uh, we, should, uh, we should identify how as well Memex can be useful on different application domains as, as the one related to, to museums. Another uh, analysis uh, we are uh, doing in collaboration with uh, one of the partners of the project, which is Ernest Young, is, uh, is uh, how the Memex can contribute to overcome a digital divide of social and cultural organization. And we had identified three principal pillars, which are the new relation with the, the audience, understand beneficiaries' uh, needs, and valuing the, the such needs of the beneficiaries. So uh, would not go uh, in the details here for the sake of time, but uh, our main uh, idea is to, to reach a, as well an exploitation phase of the project where we identified other case studies for Memex in order to understand how uh, the digital tool can be useful in other contexts. So to conclude, our next steps uh, for the project that is ending in November 22 is uh, to, to obtain a new version of the app uh, around uh, June uh, that uh, is able to, to show the augmented reality uh, functionalities along with uh, the today map functionalities you've seen in the previous slides and they're going to be tested through July, uh, September. With the, with the partners in order to co-design again these tools. Then we are going to have uh, to have uh, some events related to the pilot area, where we have uh, restitution events where in Paris, where we will do a working tour together with the, with the stakeholders. And, and of course, the, the, the people, the migrants that were working together with us in order to, to show uh, what uh, what we did and how the stories are creating a map of the people living there. And then we're going to have a final ex exhibition on the three pilots in, um, in museums and selected venues in uh, September, through September and October in Lisbon, Paris and, and Barcelona, for which we are, of course, invited to participate. And the, in the final event uh, with the policy roundtable in Barcelona in November 2022. Oh, and as I mentioned, we, we would like to explore uh, new ways to do pilots, as we did in, uh, in uh, Regia di Caserta, with the strong support of ECOM, with the interest stakeholder for Mapex. I conclude here the presentation. Thanks for my colleagues for presenting their parts. And uh, we can open uh, the floor for questions. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, everyone, uh, first of all, for uh, um, the presentation. And um, yeah, we invite uh, everyone to um, to be back on stage. Ah, and now I'm, I'm back on stage as well. <laughs> Sorry for that. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for this very detailed presentation uh, of Memex. Uh, all questions I had uh, uh, have been answered, but um, we had some during the um, uh, presentation, and uh, we also have already people who would like to join the project in the uh, pilot cities you have mentioned. So uh, that's great. You can um, connect and and uh, um, collaborate. Um, so I start with the questions uh, I've gathered. If you have more, um, please let me know. Uh, but also um, we will send, uh, that's what Corinne said also, we will send over the presentation to all the participants. And um, you have the contact there um, in the chat. So if there are further uh, questions, please get in touch um, with the representatives. Um, so, uh, one question was, uh, with several questions within, <laughs> did the app give the possibility to the users to create their own digital contents? Were they trained for this purpose? And how? How was the part of the impact of the project? Did you evaluate in some uh, way who were interested to know about the stories that were created? 
and then more questions about GDPR and IA, but maybe we can start <laughs> with uh, that. I can start with the, with the first one. Uh, okay, the, the, the digital content we are creating are the stories. Uh, so we are, we are allowing the user to input uh, the text that is related to the story, uh, audio related to vocals, if they would like to leave um, a, a vocal uh, transcript of the story or video and so on. We are not creating uh, directly the digital assets related uh, to a cultural heritage or other items that we think they are already, already available um, or at disposal to, to a museum um, or that uh, can be easily linked by, by our uh, system. In fact, we are putting available as well some tools for uh, for feeding to the knowledge graph the information, uh, to, uh, the information of these uh, digital assets. So the, our focus and the research focus of the project is relatively to create the story as a digital content, but not other content. The, mm -hmm. There was one, you wanted to add something, Corinne? There was one question uh, directed to Christina. Maybe, maybe we should. Yeah. yeah, I think we should add that actually participants mm -hmm. were trained in the use of the methodology yeah. and in the use of the app, obviously. And yes, I've seen the question addressed to me, uh, mm -hmm. which was about the fact that in Caserta we uh, had to have the help, let's say, of a technician, but this was due to time constraints while the director of the Regia wanted to have the stories ready by a certain date. And obviously working with not very tech savvy people, we would have needed a, a lot of time to, to work directly with them with the app because the, the app is quite user friendly and it allows, as Alessia said, to create stories. But of course, people need need to be trained and the time with elderly people that have been too long. So for this reason, we had to uh, have the help of a specialized technician in that specific case. Yeah, you answered um, already two uh, of the questions, Christina, thank you. Um, one other question was, and uh, that's also always uh, very interesting because, Corinne, I think you uh, mentioned the uh, project is over in November. So um, what are the future plans, uh, the plans for implementing um, the, the project um, yeah, in the cultural and social sector? Um, uh, are there plans uh, to expand the groups uh, or the partners? Do you have ideas? And of course, we all know it's always um, connected to money and funding. So for the project sustainability, I guess that's, uh, that's the question related. Uh, we, the, uh, at the end of, of the project, we'll, uh, we will um, create uh, some we can call it uh, packages, kind of, uh, related to, to the software infrastructure and the infrastructure, cloud infrastructure you need to run Memex uh, on uh, your own somehow. Of course, uh, it's correct that to run this app, uh, this app has to be um, uh, kind of uh, um, sustained uh, by cloud infrastructure and other costs. But, but um, what we would like uh, is to create a sort of toolbox for which uh, uh, all the results of Memex can be taken uh, and uh, reutilized for other pilot activities. So our, our, uh, we are studying ways in order to, of course, don't close everything when the project ends, but have uh, new ways of reusing uh, the results uh, of Memex. Of course, uh, reusing uh, is not for free. And we will also make clear uh, pretty soon, and this is our intention to, to say 
how much would it cost in terms of, uh, of course, uh, infrastructure, but also of investment uh, in, in time and uh, in audience development, uh, engagement. Of course, these are something that you have to take uh, in account as well if you would like to, to change the target uh, uh, of the project uh, itself on other application scenario. Of course, Amex in, uh, was uh, focused on migrants and, uh, and, and their idea is to now instantiate some pilots for which we can see the other type of application of the project. So maybe one last question, <laughs> two minutes left. Um, it's a very specific one. Um, regarding the mix of tangible and intangible data, if I understood well, the tangible refer to the geolocated CH items, museum and outdoor CH remains, and the intangible refers to the contribution of the part participants through their memories and digital stories. Correct. It's in the yeah. chat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, yes, it's uh, it's pretty much correct because we are trying to uh, stories are uh, uh, it's something that uh, is very hard to keep trace uh, uh, about, and uh, one of the attempt of uh, Memex is to is to make make them actually visible, uh, and this was all the the idea of uh, even augmented them in reality because you can overlay them on 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 your physical space and, and, and this may make make of course the all the, all the process more more tangible and physically um, physically visible itself but by itself is uh, to create this new entity of the story itself that can be then connected with the rest of the cultural heritage uh, assets uh, we have as well so our attempt is also to um, to relink uh, stories and experiences of people which are intangible to, to something that is uh, pretty much tangible and distributed on, on our territory. I don't know if uh, someone else would like to add something on this. Now, maybe just a very quick comment about the fact that sometimes stories is themselves were, let's say, triggered by tangible heritage, obviously, because the activities were based in physical spaces. So obviously, the starting point was tangible heritage, but quite often they also related to intangible heritage. So there was a very interesting mixture of the two elements in quite many of the stories. So the boundaries are quite blurred sometimes, although the starting point was always a tangible place, a tangible heritage location. Yeah, exactly. And it, it allows us perhaps uh, to bridge different realities. The, the intangibility can be the connected tissue between uh, separate or discrete uh, tangible heritage. Yeah, and just, um, just wanted to add that in Paris, um, it was uh, the pilot is located in a specific district, specific area, with no, I mean, um, buildings as academic cultural heritage, you know, traditional cultural heritage. There is nothing about. So it was very interesting. I mean, to 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 work with the inhabitants to to understand what is cultural heritage tangible and intangible in this area. And it's a lot uh, related to the memories, to the evolution of the area and their experience. And um, in this specific pilots, we also used some archives from digital cultural heritage, from archives, from museums, etc., in order to nourish the, the discussion um, between them. So it's also interesting to see how um, inhabitants or communities um, defined what is uh, important for them as heritage. Great, thank you very much for this.
very fruitful hour we had together. We get a lot of thank yous and congratulations and bravos from the participants. So um, you have to contact, please get in touch with each other um, to have more cooperation, collaboration. And um, yeah, thank you from Nima's side.